Hello, Master Gardeners. It's National Invasive Species Awareness Week, and I thought I'd do a wetland plant today. So here I am out in my hip boots, digging up a plant that you're really not gonna see very clearly in this video, but you have to be familiar with this because this is a high-risk invader plant that can invade water wetland areas and it's classified as noxious. It's a plant that's not native to the United States, but to Europe and North Africa and North, um, even North South America and the Northern regions, but it actually alters our habitats. And so it is classified in Maryland as a tier one invader. And so this is one we must get control of. So what does it look like? It's the yellow flag iris, called a water iris, also called a yellow iris, iris pseudoacorus. And some of you may have seen it before. I'm sure you can't begin to see this, but it's a yellow flower, beautiful yellow, completely yellow all throughout. And another characteristic of it is it has six seeded, the little f capsules that they make fruit from can actually float on the water for up to months on end. And there's an air bubble inside of it that for, allows it to float. So it can be carried in currents and streams and that's what makes it doubly dangerous. And the seeds are long lasting. They say even sometimes they've been documented as up to a year, the seed has lasted. So this is a, a bad plant. The um, seed pot is six angled. And I know you can't begin to see this, but it's a six angle, whereas our native iris is only three angled. So you can open it up and look inside to see how many angles are in that. And then another characteristic is the rhizome root, which I'm gonna show you. It's pinkish inside, which can be a helpful identification characteristic because I wasn't fully sure when I came here if that's just what I was looking at. But I know that it's all around this pond because I've been here plenty of times in the spring. I took a sample over at the drainage ditch, which is another one of the characteristics that makes it so invasive, is it clogs irrigation systems, drainage pipes, flood ditches, and that's what's happening on the exit of this pond over here. And the par forest ranger that lives here has to clear that drain pipe all the time. So it's a major problem in the respect of not only competing, but also clogging systems. And it's really a good, it grabs sediment, which is what this plot is doing. And it's actually very effective at trapping sediment. We actually utilize that positive side of it when it was first introduced into the United States. That was to our benefit. We used it because it was planted around sewage treatment ponds for the uh, consumption of different toxics and things in the water. But then it didn't take long to find that it was stealing habitat from our natives. Things like small-footed beggar ticks and, and uh, um, uh, spiked beak brush is one that it's stealing, competitively stealing from. So how would you get rid of this rascal? I already tried to yank some out of the ground and I did it for you. I pulled them out at the drainage pipe. This is underneath the snow. You can see they're all green right there. I'll zoom on it in a second. But here's the extensive root systems in this. Uh, I mean, here we are in winter. So here's my extensive root system. And let me zoom in. There's a pink color on the inside here. Let me get through this mucky ground and show this to you. See the pink on the inside? You can clearly see that where I cut it where I cut them open. Now the leaves, which typically get, typically get three to four feet long, usually you'll see a rib in them, but you don't see that at this time of year. It's, we're in Maryland right now, and it's the last week in February, so there is no mid vein on the two sides of this. Now let me see if I can safely step over here without sinking in the ground and zoom in a little. Ooh. Nope, can't do that. So here they are. Look how green they are. They'll get four feet tall. And in case you didn't know, this particular iris is poisonous and for grazing animals. There are two, a couple different irises that are poisonous, poisonous plants. So not one that you want to be around, but this is an aquatic plant that we need to get rid of. So how would we begin to control it here? Really just putting on hip boots like I have now and digging this out is a great action. Of course, the nature of a rhizome, which is what an iris has for a root system, any of those that are left behind, they can still they, they can still root. So these little pieces that I have here, any of these, when I was yanking it out of the drain, I broke off a bunch of pieces and they went down in the drain. So any of these little sections of root, you can see it's loaded with roots. Any of those little pieces can start, start new plants. So that's another way that it reproduces. Not only do the plants float, float by, but also 
pieces of rhizome can start new plants. So digging them up is the best bit. And certainly there are aquatic herbicides that could potentially be used. We're trying not to resort to that, but you can repeatedly cut the foliage back. And by doing that, you can exhaust the storage of the rhizomes. So those are some tips. So this is a really bad plant, Iris Pseudocorus, and it's called yellow flag is the other common name. It has lots of common names. So look it up because master gardeners, you know how it gets spread? You and I, we give it away. And it's against the law in Maryland to carry this plant anywhere.